Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and today is another very exciting installment of Meme Editing 101. This is what I went to film school for, to teach you guys how to make memes on the internet, and I'm okay with it. So a lot of you have left comments, DMs, messages for me about how to edit like Flying Kitty. And today's lesson is going to be one step towards that tutorial of how to edit like Flying Kitty, and it's going to be facial distortions using the liquify effect in After Effects. Liquify in After Effects is very powerful for doing stuff like this, big bulging eyes, or really teeny tiny eyes, or distorting a mouth, and it's all controllable with keyframes and a grid, and it's super, super awesome for making memes in the style of Flying Kitty or like any other meme maker that you see on YouTube. If you're not aware, Meme Editing 101 is a series on my YouTube channel that I don't update nearly often enough for how many of you ask me how to edit memes, but I would recommend going back and watching some of those older videos as well as this one so you can get your degree in meme making in After Effects for the, on the internet. Oh, also, how come like very few of you are subscribed to my channel? What's that about? If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button. It's free. I'm giving you guys some brilliant uh, subscribe. All right, let's jump in. Facial distortion effects in After Effects using Liquify. Open up Adobe After Effects because we are getting started right now. All right, After Effects is open and on my timeline, I have the clip I want to apply the liquify effect to and there are three different ways that you can search for an effect in After Effects. Number one, coming up to effect in the top left-hand corner and then going to distort and then applying liquify right here. You can also search over here in your effects and presets for liquify and you can drag and drop that on there or or you can use my favorite method, which is the Video Copilot Effects Console. It is free, link in the video description below. It's my favorite way to search for anything in After Effects. I don't really use it too much in my videos because people are always like, blah, blah but it's pretty cool. Check this out. Control space bar and boom, you can search for any effect inside of After Effects, click on it to apply it to the layer. And now we have applied the liquify effect directly onto our layer. So let's go through the interface first. The tools are the only menu that's expanded right when you apply the plugin. And we have the warp tool, the turbulence tool, the twirl tool, both clockwise and counterclockwise. We have pucker, bloat, shift pixel, reflection, clone, and reconstruction. So those are the tools that we have available. I will go through all of them in this video at some point, but the three main ones that we're gonna be focusing on are going to be warp, pucker, and bloat, because those are the three that you see most often in your favorite memes on the internet. But we'll go through all of them because I'm a nice guy and uh, like and subscribe. So with any tool selected, you can tool down the tool options and it will give you kind of a couple different ones. There's the brush size and the brush pressure. These are kind of the only two that you're really gonna be working with. If you wanted to increase the brush size, you could also hold down control and left click and kind of like move your mouse left and right and it will increase the brush size that way. Uh, this is a little bit easier when you're working inside of your mesh to kind of just get things done quickly. And right below that, we have our view options, which is insanely helpful. And if you click on this little thing that says view mesh, it will, yes, view your mesh. And you can see right now we have it set to medium. If you set it to small, the mesh will be very, very fine and way more detailed, but it will cause your computer to have to overwork slightly. So if you guys don't have that great of a computer, I would suggest using medium or large. For this tutorial, we are going to use medium. And you can also change the color. I happen to like gray because you can see through it really well. If you use something like red or green, it starts to like highlight weird parts of your video that you wouldn't otherwise notice. So I like to keep it on gray because it keeps it nice and uniform. And as for keyframes and making everything do what we need it to do, we are going to be using these three at the bottom here, distortion mesh, distortion mesh offset, and distortion percentage. So I'm gonna click off my view mesh and I'm going to go into my video where I want my eyes to kind of pucker up. Right here looks good to me. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set a keyframe for the distortion mesh offset. And up here in the top left-hand corner, is the distortion mesh offset. I don't know why it defaults to the top left corner, but with my arrow selected, I'm just going to pull the distortion mesh offset right in between my eyes because I know I'm gonna be focusing on the eyes. And then I'm just gonna go over three keyframes by holding control and hitting the right arrow three times. And I'm just gonna center the distortion offset in between my eyes every time. And the reason we do this is so that you don't have to go back and redo your work later. And this is actually going to save you a tremendous amount of time. All right, we're gonna stop it there because nobody wants to watch this part of the video. Okay, I'm gonna hit you on my layer to show all of my keyframeable properties. And if I scrub through, you can kind of see that distortion mesh offset right in between my eyes. And this is going to be very important for the next step, which is going to be inflating my eyes using the bloat tool. So we're gonna come up here to the bloat tool, click on that guy, hover over my eye, and I'm just going to hold down the left mouse button and it will bloat my eyes. And the reason that we did the distortion mesh offset is because I want it to track with my face. 
if we didn't do the distortion offset and I deleted all of these keyframes, that pucker will just kind of like stay there and my eyes will go around it, which will actually give you some really funny results if you want. But if you're trying to track it with your subject, you're gonna to wanna to do the distortion mesh offset first, and then that will kind of give you the desired results. Now, as you see, it's kind of like keeping my eyes bloated the entire time. And that's because I didn't actually set a distortion mesh keyframe or a distortion percentage keyframe. There are two ways to kind of get in and out of your distortion meshes. And these are the two keyframes. It's up to you which one you want to use. I kind of go back and forth between the two, depending on what I want to do. Uh, but here's how you use both. So I'm going to undo what I did. And I'm going to set a distortion mesh keyframe right at the beginning. And then I'm going to kind of come over here to my third keyframe. And now I'm going to use the bloat tool and bloat up my eyes. And if I hit U on my keyboard to show all keyframeable properties, I am starting my distortion mesh from a clean mesh. You can see it here. And then by the time I get to this keyframe, it is now bloating the mesh. So these are the keyframes that are making the mesh actually distort. And you can use the distortion mesh to your advantage. And all you have to do is either copy and paste your first keyframe to get back to your original unaltered mesh, or you can use the reconstruction tool, which is right up here in the bottom right hand corner. And you can kind of see it will bring your mesh back to normal and it will reset it using the reconstruction tool. So the reconstruction tool you can kind of use to your advantage by lessening the distortion a little bit, completely erasing it, or you can copy and paste your first keyframe, which will basically reset it. Or you can use the distortion percentage. Check this out. So I'm gonna erase all of my distortion mesh keyframes, and now we are back to our original state of it being bloated. And what I can do is set a distortion percentage. Go to my keyframe here set another distortion percentage keyframe, go back to my first keyframe and set this to zero. And now it is going from zero distortion percentage all the way up to 100. And you can actually go past 100 if you want to. If I crank this up to 200, it will really do some terrifying uh, nightmare fuel things to your distortion. So just be careful at how much you're actually distorting this because uh, it'll just get really weird really quickly. So now we have this distortion mesh animating in and I can just animate it out very simply by copying the keyframes and reversing them on the distortion percentage. So that will allow you to get in and out of distortions. Or again, you can use the distortion mesh and reset it up to you which one you want to use. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do the distortions in a nutshell. I'm going to erase all of my distortion percentages and my distortion meshes, and we are going to demo kind of the other tools that are available to you. Uh, the first and foremost, we're going to use the pucker tool, which I don't know why it's called the pucker tool, because you're actually going to be shrinking the mesh instead of puckering it. Pucker and bloat are almost the same word, but you want to shrink. Anyway, so use the pucker tool to shrink your mesh down if you wanted to give yourself very small eyes or a Michael Jackson-esque nose. You would use the pucker tool for that, which will pinch your mesh inwards and give you tiny, tiny features. And the other most used tool is the warp tool. And so I'm going to go over here to the mouth and I'm going to quickly run through those same instances here. I'm going to zoom into my mouth and I'm going to set a keyframe for my distortion mesh offset. And we'll just go three frames every time. This is a little bit different than the eyes. Okay, I'm gonna keep it in the center of my mouth. Okay, looking good. So we're gonna go back to our first keyframe here. I'm going to set a distortion mesh at zero and then kind of go over a couple keyframes. And now I'm going to use the warp tool and kind of zoom in here and warp the sides of my mouth. And I'm going to be careful to keep everything within the frame of my face. I don't want my face to blow it out. I really kind of just want my mouth to do strange and nightmare fuelish things. And now I have done that, ladies and gentlemen. My mouth is terrifying and it is kind of keeping the shape of my face here. And the warp tool is definitely great for doing mouths. It's also great for doing eyebrows, <laughs> which will give you uh, kind of funky results. If you're wearing a hat like I am, make sure that you're not really warping the band of the hat and you're kind of doing your own thing here. And of course you can increase the distortion percentage if you want, and you can kind of animate this going up and down to like make some weird Joker uh, type effect if you'd like. So bloat will allow you to inflate, pucker will allow you to decrease, and warp will allow you to stretch. We also have the turbulence tool, which I would recommend increasing the brush pressure on the turbulence tool, which will kind of allow you to uh, do a weird like acid flashback effect to somebody's face. Uh, that's a cool one. 
We also have the twirl options, which will allow you to twirl the mesh. Uh, you should probably decrease the brush pressure for this. Uh, this is a good one if you wanna like really distort somebody's nose or the middle of the face and kind of keep the facial twist tracked. Uh, so the first one here is clockwise. The other one is counterclockwise, depending on which way you wanna go. We've covered pucker, we've covered bloat. The shift pixel tool is kind of cool. It will just allow you to kind of move things around. Um, I don't exactly know how it works, but it's kind of just moving the mesh very similar to the warp tool but it kind of gives different results, uh, funnier results, certainly. The reflection tool will allow you to uh, pull some reflections into your scene. It kind of works in weird ways. Uh, I don't really use this one too often, but I found the best success by just kind of clicking around on your mesh, and then you can really start to do some weird things. And the clone tool. Now, if you guys use the clone tool, uh, you might get a, a weird error in After Effects. I'm just gonna try to click here. It says, could not use the clone tool because the area to clone has not been defined. Alt click to define. Now the clone tool won't allow you to clone an eye. I'm gonna hold down Alt, click here, and then I'm left clicking and nothing's happening. The clone tool in the liquify tool only allows you to clone something that has already been liquefied. So I'm going to shrink my eye. Now use the clone tool, holding down Alt, left clicking. Now it will kind of clone the effect in different parts of my video. So it will clone the exact same effect, uh, but it won't actually clone the area that you're trying to clone. So it's a little bit misleading, but if you guys have done something here, it's an easy way for you to kind of clone exactly what you were going for in the first place. And that looks like a great thumbnail image, maybe. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that just in case. And that's it, guys. The Liquify tool in Adobe After Effects, very powerful and not only good for making memes, but it's good for now it's pretty much only good for making memes. As always, very exciting edition of Meme Editing 101, getting you one step closer to editing like Flying Kitty or your other favorite meme makers on the internet. And hopefully this installment of Meme Editing 101 will be useful to you. Again, go back and watch some of my older videos if you'd like, chock full of goodies. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. I do appreciate it. My name is Nadia Ian Sands. This of course is learn how to edit stuff. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like this content. I do this for you. And all I ask in return is a little click. Just a little subscribe so you can see when I post new videos and give you new meme editing techniques for you to go out and do awesome things. There are some links in the video description for you to support me and this channel. If you'd like, go ahead and click the link tree in the video description below, which will give you access to a bunch of goodies and a bunch of stuff that I highly recommend to you as meme creators, as editors, as video professionals in general. Again, subscribe to my channel. My name is Nadine Sands. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.